Hello and welcome to Airlines 101 with Laura. I'm here to talk about exemption 3585 and exemption 17347, two exemptions that are frequently confused by pilots and dispatchers working in airline ops. Exemption 3585 and 17347 came from an old airline that no longer exists called People Express. But let's look at what they actually are. Like in the name, they are not regulations. They are, in fact, exemptions. And what they do is provide airlines with some relief from complying with 14 CFR 121.613 and 121.625. And these are regulations that sometimes prove a bit troublesome for airline operations. So let's look at why. Why would we want to not comply with, 30, with those two regulations? If we look at the regulations themselves, what these regulations require is for the flight to be able to be dispatched, for it to leave the gate, it has to have weather reports and forecasts, and any combination of the two to be at or above approach minimums at the destination. And they also require weather reports, forecasts, and any combination thereof to be above alternate minimums at our alternate. Now, if you want to know more about alternate minimums, check out my other videos. I have a very popular one about derived alternate minimums that we use under Part 121 airline operations. But for now, this exemption is pretty cool if your airline has it because it is going to allow the flight to still be dispatched, leave the gate, even if there are weather reports or forecasts that are below minimums. And I guess I should really say it's mostly forecasts on here, but looking at the actual forecasts here. And so you might wonder, how? That seems sort of like illegal. Well, you are not following the regulation, and that's because you have this exemption. If your airline is allowed to do this, it has an exemption from the regulation. And there's specific parameters that we have to look at. For one, it only applies with what we call conditional language in a forecast. And by conditional language, I'm talking about tempo or prob. Those two languages, we call those two languages conditional. So if it's a tempo, like it's not going to happen the whole time during the forecast, or there's a prob, so it's not going to be the whole, it's not even for sure if it's happening, then that's conditional language. How can we get away with this? It sounds like we're just getting away with breaking regs, but we are following our exemption, and you do that by adding a second alternate. If you add a second alternate, the dispatcher adds a second alternate, and it allows this exemption from those regulations by following some specific parameters. So now let's look at what those parameters are, because this, this can get confusing here. When I'm talking about conditional language, again, at the destination, at our destination that the flight is supposed to be dispatched to, we can have that conditional tempo or prob in the forecast that is predicting no less than half the required visibility. So if at our destination we need one mile visibility in order to fly the planned approach, then we could go if the visibility were one half. Okay, I have example at the end here. At our first alternate, now notice I said first alternate, we're gonna do something with this. You can have a tempo or a prob in the forecast predicting, again, no less than half of our required ceiling and visibility that's required for that alternate. And again, if you don't know what derived alternate minimums are, as it applies to Part 121 operations, go watch that video that's on my channel already. It's very popular. So at our destination and the first alternate, we have this allowance for tempo or prob language to be down to half the required ceiling, half the required visibility, as long as we notice and we make sure that any lines in the forecast with from or becoming these have to meet the minimums, okay? So very key to note that it's just tempo and prob that we're allowed to do this, okay? Not from and not becoming. 
And that second alternate, we are going to add that on our flight release. The dispatcher adds that, but we really need to choose that rather wisely because at that second alternate, everything in the weather forecast has to meet our derived alternate minimums for that second alternate. So if I have derived alternate minimums with two ILS approaches and I have a 400 foot ceiling and one mile visibility, which is really common at big airports, we get 400 foot ceiling, one mile visibility. Every single thing in that forecast for that airport has to meet the alternate minimums. There is no allowance for anything outside of that. Okay, so that's including ceiling and visibility. So we add that second alternate to our flight release. We also have to put some language on our flight release that says somewhere on it, released under exemption 3585 or released under exemption 17347. It's going to be printed on that flight release. That tells the crew that the reason we have the, this alternate and the destination, which are ever one, one or both, that don't meet our typical requirements is because we've added a second alternate and we made sure that there's that it's absolutely going to meet all the minimum requirements. And the dispatcher also needs to load enough fuel for us to go to the destination and the farthest alternate plus 45 minutes. And, and I'm only talking about domestic fuel reserves at this point with this video. So don't get confused if you're looking at other rules, but the domestic rules is destination and the farthest alternate plus 45 minutes. That's how much fuel dispatcher loads. The crew then needs to communicate closely with your dispatcher, with the dispatcher, because you don't necessarily load enough fuel for the crew to go to both of the alternates. Typically, we're only loading enough to go to destination, the farthest alternate, 45 minutes of reserve, and then possibly a little bit more. But um, unlikely that the dispatcher would somehow load enough to go to the destination, the first alternate, and the second alternate, and then plus 45. That would be very unlikely. So um, make sure that you are aware of that. And during your in-flight period, the crew is going to need to look at the weather, communicate with the dispatcher, figure out how we're going to do this. Are we going to go to our first alternate? Has the weather improved? Is it going to work to go to our destination? Or do we need to just go to that second alternate? Because you don't necessarily have enough fuel to do everything. So here's an example for a um, flight release. So on our normal um, release in San Francisco, that's our destination. And so if San Francisco is my destination, um, I can see here that I require a half a mile visibility. Okay, if it was a 3585 or 17347, that could be as low as a quarter mile. But only remember in a tempo or a prob. At the first alternate, we've chosen the normal alternate minimums would be 400 foot ceiling and one mile. Under a 3585, the tempo or prob at that first alternate could be as low as a 200 foot ceiling and or a half a mile visibility. But notice we've added a second alternate to Oakland here. And at that, at that second alternate, we have figured out from deriving our alternate minimums, 600 foot ceiling and one and a quarter miles what's needed. And notice that is also true on the 3585 or 17347 release. So, that second alternate has to be added. We add enough fuel to go to whichever one is the farthest plus 45 minutes. It's important that you know your exemption. Okay, make sure you understand what your company actually has. Uh, some um, companies don't allow this outside of the United States. Some companies don't allow this at all. Okay, where I previously worked, we did not have this exemption. Uh, we were a bit of a different type of operation, but we did not have this exemption. So don't assume this video is just intended to give you a big overview of what exemption 3585 and 17347 are about. Make sure you know your specific operation and your manuals. 
and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more aviation content. Check out my other videos, especially my stuff about derived alternate minimums.